Well, welcome to Rosemary's Cook Along. And do you know, this is a very, very exciting day for me today because you know how I bang on about local produce, about local farming, local meat, local veg, seasonal produce? Well, we've just gone into partnership with the Farm Shop Retail Association where it's really exciting so anybody can get anything from their local farm shop that is if they've signed up for it to actually cook along with me on a saturday evening at five o'clock and this is exactly what i wanted because you know with all the other things like hello fresh gusto this is so good because you know where your things are coming from where it comes from is so important because by doing this you're supporting all the local producers and that is what this is all about now today today we're going to be making a steak and kidney well i'm going to call it a casserole because pie you think of it being pastry but it is a pie because it's got neeps and tatters on the top now the reason why i've actually chosen this is because it's my homage to Burns Night, which I had my haggis, but I didn't actually have my neeps and tatties, but I, I had just potatoes, but I love haggis. So, they, and I always get it from McSween's in Edinburgh. Absolutely adorable, absolutely delicious. So, um, but I put it on top of my casserole. Now, I have actually made, so what we're going to do, so let me take you through. We're going to do the process we're going to make the actual steak and kidney which is the traditional steak and kidney filling we will then i've got one in the oven that is just about done which i will take out but we have to let it sit for a moment because i need the fat to come off so i can skim the oil and fat off because it's really that's very really important otherwise it'll be a little bit too fatty so you need to skim that off now and the other thing is that I have made one already. So that will go in as soon as I bring the other one that's ready, the actual filling is ready. And I'll pop the other one in and you will see. We're going to obviously make the neeps and tatties. And the thing is at the end, you can eat it just as it is. Or as I said in my little Facebook note, you can actually let it just cool down a little bit before you actually put your neeps and tatties on the top. The reason I say cool it down is because what happens is it doesn't sink at all. So it, when it cooks, it cooks evenly. So there should be a straight, even thing on the so be shape, um, an even layer on the top. Um, so I'll, I'll take you through that as we do. So we've got to start off by making the filling. So the first thing we're going to be doing is basically getting our delicious chuck steak and our lovely kidneys. Now, there's only 300 kidneys. The reason why is because sometimes people don't like too much. Me, I tend to use 400 to 800 chuck steak, but that's sometimes a bit too strong for people. So I've used 300 to 900 or a kilo or whatever you wanted. So that's it. Now it's a good portion, isn't it? And it's fresh, it's beautiful. And I can't tell you, it's the best thing too. Now, the other thing is that I've got 50 grams of flour. Now, actually weighing this flour out is quite important because whatever's left in dusting it, I will put it into the onion, all right? So that's why you don't throw anything away, you use everything. Now, we're going to obviously cook the onions. I said one large onion, so I'll probably use one and a half onions and thyme, and I've got my lovely stock, garlic, and the other thing is mushrooms. Now, I have a thing about mushrooms. People take the stalks off. The flavor is in the stalks. It is delicious. The only thing you cut the bottom of the stalk, baby, if it's nasty. Otherwise, don't bother, because the whole thing is that it's all the flavor. You need the flavor. So let's get cracking. So first of all, we're going to put the steak in. So I'm going to turn my heat on. Now, what I'd like you all to do is those who are on, please, who have not actually been on here before, please, will you say if I'm going too fast? Or will you say, I don't understand? Or whatever. It doesn't matter. You can say whatever you want. So just tell me. Now, the other thing is I'm using rapeseed oil. 
Local, local, local. I don't use olive oil anymore, hardly. Just a case. Just occasionally, hang on, just occasionally for finishing off. Yes, what's the question? Can they use liver instead of kidneys? Um, yes, you can, but I would use lamb's, lamb's kidneys. I would use lamb's kidneys instead of um, oxtail kidney. But then you can use, you can use actually calf's liver. It's fine, it's a good question actually. I've never done it, but I don't see why not. But it'd be a slightly different flavour, that's the only thing. It would be slightly different. The uh, thing is, th that offal, it's the offal, it's the flavour of that particular offal, which is utterly delicious. Now, we're going to pop it all in, every bit of it, bring it up. Now, talk about, let's talk about frying. When you fry things, it's quite important that you don't fry things too close together. Why? It's because it starts to bray. So what you need to do is, oh, I've dropped one on a piece of... Sorry. Now look, I have to tell you, if that had been me, I know it's clean down there, I actually probably would have done it, but never mind. Right, I'm going to bung all the kidneys together. I'm a bit naughty that way, because at home, never anywhere else. So here we go. There we are, put it all in. So we've really covered it all. Now, what I'd like to do is also season it too. Season it. Actually, I've run out of ground pepper. Can you believe it? I can't believe it. I have a ground pepper. Right. There we go. That's all, that's all done. Now, you can see, by doing that amount, and I've got it exactly right, it's literally just coated it. So you haven't got all that flour that's sitting there that you have to go all the time. It's exactly the right amount. Let's make sure. And there's nothing left. Nothing left to, I'll show you. So I was going to have something left. I would have actually, to be honest with you, I would have just put it in, but there isn't any left now. So we'll pop it up. There we are, put it in there. So now, braising. So I'm putting them in. I've got a frying pan here with some oil. We're going to do it in a three batches, actually. Now, the other thing I've got, I've got, just put this in, that's it. I've got a casserole dish ready. Now, I always find it easier. I know it's a one pot situation and you can do it in one pot. No problems. But I just find because I'm doing the onions, I'm doing the other things, I think it's quite good just to have a pot here. While that's just doing, let me take, let me take the other one, the one that's done, which I haven't had a look at yet, out, but I need to leave it. So we'll look at it together. There we go. We're going to take it out of the oven. That'll give you time to actually, oh, there we go. And I'm going to put, let me just show you. I'm going to put this cooked one, I mean, not cooked, uncooked, but it will be cooked, in. Oh, what? Okay, that's going in the oven. Right. So. Now, patience is a virtue. So, this is where you have to do. Now, while that's going on, I might as well just have something. I've got to clean my hands, actually, because they've completely... Do wash your hands, take your time, enjoy yourself. I've had such a busy week this week. Um, I've been doing um, this American show, which, um, which I'm doing occasionally now which is great fun. I had to make, honestly, I had to make about a hundred scones. These are the scones that's just left. I've got some scones here, just left. Yeah, look at these. I had to make so many. They're delicious. I love them. Delicious. Right. My son can take them home. And the children will enjoy them. And I've got lots of Cornish cream to actually put on top. So I'm going to turn it over, so it's not quite done yet. Now, let me explain the thing about frying. The thing about frying is that what happens is it attaches itself, and then when you turn it down, you can't move it. You mustn't move it. All you have to do is turn it down, and what will happen, it'll loosen itself off. You can actually hear when it's ready. It's actually ready now, I can tell. And these actually haven't 
Okay, have to look. Okay. Can they see this? Now, patience is a virtue. Patience is a virtue. Okay, so get it nice. Now, the reason why, there's two reasons for doing this, cooking it, and that is for the flavour. It doesn't seal it in. Seriously, it doesn't. There's no way it's sealing it in. Because what happens is that thickens the sauce. The actual, here we are, the actual, can we just, we got windows and doors open, good. Oh, we need to put this on, so I've got to put this on low, because the, the, what's name's going to go? There we are. Um, ooh, sorry. Sorry. Move it. That's it, it's on low. So, the reason for doing it is because it helps to thicken the sauce during cooking. I will show you in a minute when I look at the other thing. Now, keep going. So I'm going to take this off. Look at that. Isn't that delicious? You need that plus. I suppose if you can say, who's ever asked me that question, it's acting a bit like a roux, but not. But so basically, so as I was saying, it gives. There's two things. Colour, we're doing for frying it first. Colour and flavour. Caramelisation gives it that lovely nutty flavour really good it's delicious actually there we go pop it all in I don't think I've got anything on there no there we go this is this is where we have to have the patience this is why I had to do one earlier now this takes exactly one and a half hours to cook so and then you just have to let it rest as I said, you can have it this evening if you want to. You probably, you probably, you know, once you come out of the oven after one and a half hours, um, just let it cool down a bit and then you can put your neats and tatties. But obviously, it's not quite the best because, you know, I'm a perfectionist and I always want it to be absolutely perfect. That's why I said you're going to have a late dinner. Well, not too late at dinner, 8.30, 8 o'clock, you'll be fine. Nice glass of wine, get the wine out, get the wine doing, that's what I call, enjoy. And also, this is what I call, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to actually make sure that, you know, I've got hearty food to begin with. This is in January. This is, this is a hearty food thing. And can I turn it down because it's really, oh, that noise, it's like, it's like getting over. I turned it down a bit actually, so that's not so bad. Um, so basically, having a hearty meal, next week I'm going to be something that the children can get involved with, being half term. Well, I think it's half term, I believe it's half term, so my grandchildren are telling me. But, uh, so I thought I'd do something like Toad in the Hole. The recipe will be on the website, on the Instagram, all over these things. It's another way of medium. Anyway, as I was saying, this, this, um, week has been very very busy um i can't tell you i've got a bit of a secret but i'm not allowed to tell you yet because if i do i'll be in real trouble so uh i'm always wanting to tell everybody absolutely everything and that's my problem but i have to be good with this one very important now while that's just doing i'm going to continue now take this off to actually cut the onions now i'm just going to slice the onions all right so what I've done is, I just want to see, I left one. Oh, I want those tongs, please. Just give me those tongs. I want those, uh, thank you. I want this. So what I do, I, to peel an onion, all I do is I cut it in half. I keep the root on. The root will stop you from crying. And I just literally pull off. I just pull off the skin. That's all it is. So that's what, that's why. I won't cry because I'm not allowing anything to come out any of the um, those things in there now off we go now the other thing about this guys you can actually make it peppery if you like pepper put more black pepper in it's totally up to you I've got some I've got some lovely Henderson that I've got to get out of the cupboard 
some reason, I forgot to put it out, which is Yorkshire, my Yorkshire last, my Yorkshire roots, and um, I used to say I could play cricket for Yorkshire, because of my roots, my Yorkshire bollard, as they say. Right, here we are. In the restaurants, every time a fire would come, come out, it was actually quite funny. We, we, ooh, we would all clap. <laughs> so funny. Really bad, really. So, in we go. Last lot, patience. In we go. I hope, how are you doing? Uh, is it, will you give me thumbs up, please? Thumbs up. Now, I want to show you. There is no flour left. Look. That's it. So, you haven't wasted any flour. You've got exactly the right amount and things like that it's quite good but if there was some left I would have actually uh, I washed my hands I have got to wash my hands they're telling me to wash my hands right which I was going to do anyway but you're quite right keep me thing right I'm just turning this down a bit that's it. Now, so let's just, oh, I might as well do the last one, you know, doesn't matter. You know, that's the thing about recipes. They're there for guidelines. And if you want a bit of extra onion, add a bit of extra onion. Doesn't matter, guys, doesn't matter. You know, just do what you want. But the whole thing is, it's just what I feel is when they're doing this cook along, what I love is doing it together. So nice. Just doing it with people, like my friends. Now I must get my, ooh, the alarm. <laughs> That's when we're cooking at home. Somebody's frantically stopping. <laughs> that is so funny. Now, lovely Henderson relish. Here we go, guys. Thanks, um, Martin. Those who don't know Martin uh, has been with me since I came down south. I have to say, and uh, for nearly eight years. So quite good, it's really lovely. Right, there we go, perfect. Now, in this gorgeousness, this pan, there's so much flavor. There is so, now, you can, if you want a little bit of wine, if you've opened the wine already, you can, afterwards, you can put a little bit of wine in if you want to. There we go, shove it all in. Now, I'm going to shove some butter in there, actually. Where is the, oh, there it is. I'm going to take some butter, but the recipe, there we go, <laughs> this is how I roll, I do give a figure, but you know what, there we go, right, it's about 50 grams, so, uh, there we are, now I'm cooking this off, right, in here, there's going to be some garlic, let me just put some thyme in, oh, I love thyme, do you know, I loved, when I was at Swinton Park, they had the most unbelievable herb garden. We used to get Susan, who used to do grow all the herbs. She used to put down the most amazing things. I absolutely loved it. Susan Cumberland Lister. And um, we had so much up there. And in my garden, funny enough, I got in the garden. I, I just moved a year and a half ago to this, this lovely place. And I actually... Uh, uh, it was in the Horticultural Society, it was in the magazine, the BBC Gardener's Magazine, and um, it was so exciting because I only grew vegetables in my garden, and I loved it, absolutely loved it. So basically, herbs and garden, very unusual things, but now I've had to leave it. I've had to leave it. Right, I'm now going to put in some mushrooms, and I'm not going to do anything to them. You know, why? Just enjoy. Right, put it in there. So you can see all the flavours coming together. All the flavour. There we are. Right. There we are. Bung it in. Okay. Now, I don't know whether you saw that, but I cut the top and the tail off the uh, the um, gin, uh, the garlic. Why, by, while doing that, what happens? If I go like this, the skin just comes off. Look. So I can just shove it in. There we are. Now, you can put as many garlic in as you want. It doesn't matter. I'm going to pop it all in. 
I'll show you, there's another one. Look, there's a bit of stalk in there, but never mind. I cut that off, go the other end. Watch this. Let me just clear my door board so you can see clearly. Actually, that's better. Now, so there, there's a piece of garlic. Go, splat, and it's all out. Can we exchange um, the onion for leeks? Yes, you can, but it's not the same. That is not a, that's a different casserole altogether, but there's no reason why you can't. I mean, you can do anything. As far as I'm concerned, you can do anything. But remember, that's not the flavour we're getting here. This is a this is steak and kidney filling. But if you want a different, like a different casserole, of course you can. It's fine. Of course you can. You can do anything. You can. It will just be a beef and leek filling. You can do anything at all. Absolutely anything. Just, just don't call it that. Now, so that's that. Right, I'm now going to put in this delicious Henderson relish, or Worcester sauce, as it is. But it's very Yorkshire. Um, put that in. I love that flavour. Right, now, just put that in, bring it up. Now, what's happened is, I'm going to just put a little bit of the liquid in there, just to bring the bottom up, before I add the liquid to the whole thing. Yep, this is the beef stock. Now, you can use chicken stock if you couldn't get it. So what I'm going to do now is, I, I need you to see this actually. I'll, oh, well, I'll bring it here, it's fine. I'm going to put this, so all this is coming with all the flavour. So I've got a very clean pan, look. Okay. So that's, that's really good. Turn that off because we don't need it. Right, mix it all up. You know, I absolutely love doing this. I absolutely, this is real cooking, you know, this is real cooking. And, okay, there's a little bit of flour, but it wasn't really a little bit of flour. Think how many people, you're probably not even having a teaspoon each. Think how much, so it's not unhealthy, not at all. Now, stock. Now, the reason why I'm using it, leaving it, doing it now, is because I only want it just to cover Right, so I'm going to pour it in. It's normally the right amount because, and you know what? It's perfect. <laughs> so, there we are. Now, do you realise it's not covered it because you don't want to cover it? Now, before you put it in the oven, what you need to do is bring it up to the boil. Now, I'm obviously not going to do it until a bit later because I've already done that. So, can you see that? It's everything sticking out slightly, but because there's so many juices in the mushrooms, in the beef, all those flavours will come out. And you need to know the quantity of the liquid too, because you need to make sure that the sauce is not thick. You don't want a thick sauce, but what you want is you want a sort of a, a luscious sauce. Um, velvety. Yeah, maybe velvety. Yeah. Uh, but you need a sort of that sort of thing. And if you go too wild on the flour, you won't get that. Now, I'm going to put the lid on here because I will literally bring this up to the boil and I will pop this into the oven for exactly, once it's boiled, for exactly one and a half hours. Now, as I said, I did one and I've just taken it out. I haven't even looked at it. So it'll be the first time I've looked at it. Uh, again, what is the purpose of browning? Is it different to Worcester sauce? Um, the purpose of browning is... Um, browning is different to Worcester sauce. It's not... Browning just gives it that little bit. In fact, tell you what, because I love browning, I use browning a lot in my casseroles if I want a certain colour. So what I'm, no, no, not browning. I've used Henderson relish, which is different. The browning is this, which is not in the recipe, but I do use it. I never ever put browning in a recipe because it's not like that. So what I'm going to do, this is what I do. I put about, I want to do a teaspoon. Don't put too much in because... <sighs> so, salt was in the stock and we can do the seasoning afterwards. So, one teaspoon will be enough. Let's just see. Right. 
Now, do you see the colour? Right, what's going to happen now goes a little bit darker. We don't want it much. The one teaspoon, and I think that's spot on. No more. So I'll just, then in that case, I'm just going to put the rest from that teaspoon in there. Oh, yeah. Perfect. And uh, how many portions does this uh, make? This will make, well, I've, it, I've said for four, but it's really for six. Don't worry. Okay, leftovers. You know, when you're doing steak and kidney and this sort of thing, you don't really want to do too little. Right, I'm now going to take this, leave it here, and I'll do this later, because you'll see. Now, let's bring the one I took out of the oven just now. But before I do that, I really want to just clear this away. Because, yeah, sorry? What's happened? Oh, okay. That's all right. Uh, he was going to put it out. That, I did it. I'm thinking very good today. I'm being very good. Right. I'm not going to open it until you see it. Because, and fingers crossed, everything's fine. Right. Now, just do this. So, it's not too much mess, is it? So, here we go. Take this off. Right. I'll put it here. Ready? Yum! Look at that colour. Now, first of all, I need to take the fat off the top. So, this is what you will do after one and a half hours. So, you're going to remove the fat, the oil. Okay. There we are. Nobody's telling me to slow down today. There we go. Go. How many people have we got watching? One, 180, one, 180 when you start. 180, please. Is the temp, is, oh, I forgot to say the oven. Oh, don't put it into, put it into a preheated oven. Sorry, guys. That was a bit of a mishap. Never mind, they only take about five minutes to heat. Right. Rosemary, we just, uh, someone's asked from Lee Matthews, can you just recap what we do with the meat once it's all combined in the oven? Yep. What you're going to do with the meat, you pop all the onions together with the, the onion, with the um, mushrooms, the thyme, the garlic. You pop it all in, okay? So then, you then put it into the oven with the stock, obviously, as well. And then you are going to take it out, let it rest for a minute while the fat raises to the top. And now you're going to do what I'm doing is remove the top. There we are. Now, obviously, if you let it rest for a lot longer, let it get cold, then the fat is easier to take out. Now, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to taste it for seasoning. There we are. Oh, that's delicious. Yum. Now, I'm going to... what. I gravy on the side which you will find out in a minute so what I do is oh I've got a test the meat is the meat done that would be a good idea wouldn't it to test it let's have a look oh yes that's going to be absolutely fine because it's got to cook again so so we're going to take that out put it in here okay guys so that's absolutely delicious yum now that it does really look good doesn't it that really does look good so what I'm going to do now is put the gravy on the stove and let it cook for a bit to thicken up so, now if you've got some bits of time in there, and I can see I've got bits of time. Do you know what? I don't mind having a bit of time coming in my, in it at all. I really don't mind, seriously. I think we're all too precious today. We're all far too precious. Right. There we go. So, 
so that's done now so what I'm going to do make sure I've got it all out that's fine last one so I'm gonna just leave that there and I'm just going to put this onto the stove and I'm gonna boil it literally boil it so in fact I'm going to ooh, put it on here I'll put it up here so you can see it being done Woo. so I'm going to boil it up now the reason why I'm going to boil it is because I want it to thicken slightly so now here we are now at this stage at this stage guys um, you can let it cool down you can uh, put in the fridge overnight and then you can put your tatters on tomorrow or just let it cool down a bit and then have it later it won't take long it really won't take long so we're just going to bring this so it's all boiling away so now neeps and tatties here we go this is um neeps and oh, i'll just put this here neeps and tatties that's to go in the oh i'm having this in the neeps and tatties oh i just want to say one thing this is when you'd also let it cool down you do the sauce let it cool down a bit and you put the pastry on the top okay if you're going to have pastry but i'm not people were questioning about that oh my gosh my lovely new kitchen well may i just tell you about that my new kitchen now, the reason why i'm doing kitchen is because i did interior design i was in designer and i worked for architects in the city and i did you know that sort of thing and I, I I love kitchens. I love kitchens. So I so I'm just cutting the um, I'm just cutting the the swede. Um, and they take it takes double the amount of cooking to the potato. So I'm putting them on first. So I'm actually um, here we go. Yes, I have. So I put a pan of water on. So get a pan of water on and get your your swede in, in it because it's as swede is as hard as a rock. And it's a pain in the neck when you're actually boiling it so you need to boil it quite long so let's put this in first Ooh, something's gone now now i'm not going to pick up that guys don't worry right so you asked about my, my kitchens i love this so i do this kitchen now for instance okay look at this this is so cool where i chop here because i've got that there i have my my bin look i've got my bin it's so perfect, isn't it? So everything I have done, I've done ergonomically, so it goes around. It's quite a big kitchen, this, a reasonable size, and it actually, I mean, it's, but it's affordable. This kitchen's affordable, and that's what I want to do, because every time when I was looking for kitchens, they were a fortune, a fortune. And I thought, value-wise, this was amazing. And so I thought, well, let's, let's bring out Let's do a kitchen company. Actually, have to, but I've got four choices of kitchens, four. So people can choose the handleless ones, which is what I've got, which I love, some different colors. And then I've got the, um, I'm just taking the other suite. I've got to just take this off. Can you see me doing this, guys? Look. Um, and then I decided, okay, we're going to put, for instance, those who already know my spice rack, um, we're going to do things like that so we can build the spice rack for people and also just just make it work for you Because I have to tell you men are better and actually the designer I have now He is superb, but mostly men when I was working for the architects They were useless at doing kitchens men just didn't know how to do a kitchen because they didn't know what a woman wanted But I think they may have more of an idea now today, but I have a wonderful designer and he's fabulous. So I've gone into business with him. Uh, we've gone into business with him. And also another person, Steve Cooper. So Steve, Fra Steve Cooper, Steve, Stephen Fury. So they're all there. So I feel very lucky. So if anybody wants a kitchen. Uh, and also I'm going to come to the kitchens. When they're done, I've decided I'm going to come and do a personal visit because I think why not. Now, so these are on, okay? Sauce is going, so let me just check the sauce because it doesn't, won't take long. Ah, can you see it thickening? Look. Can you see that thickening, guys? Look. See that? If, I'm, if, if someone wanted to freeze it at the point of cooking the, 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 the pie, that bit there that you're doing, could they freeze it at that point? Oh, yes, like a dream. 
Don't freeze it with the neeps in, though. crystallize it becomes mushy it's never the same so i always say to people look don't freeze your swede don't do the topping just do the mixture perfect right now i'm going to do the potatoes get those ready so i hope you're onto the potatoes now are we having anybody who's saying slow down no am i going on a good pace i'm pretty impressed i'm very impressed in fact keep going Right, so we're going to go like this. Um, so we're like this. There we go. One. How's your show going at the moment? The show is going brilliantly. The show. I just want everybody to watch it. I need to put. I need to just change this, guys. Hang on. Let me just concentrate on this because it needs to go on a higher. Yes, the the actual. Uh, they need to get these Swedes cooking because they take a while to cook. Right, okay, so how's the show? Right, for those who don't know, for those who don't know, this is nearly ready actually. Hang on, let me just concentrate. I think we're done, look, that's done. Now, I'm going to do this. I'm gonna take a little bit of this. Look, I want you to see it. Now, do you remember me saying it was slightly velvety? That's what I was looking for. That's it, no more. Right, that's no more. Right, so now this is... ...today that I've done, which is ready. So basically I'll put this here ready to heat through. Now, yes, those who don't know my Netflix series, it's very exciting. It's called The Best Leftovers Ever. Now, I, I filmed it in America, it's funny, it's fun, but there's an underlying serious number, it's, it's all about the food. So I was the sort of serious judge, which I'm serious about food, but then I also have a quirky side, slightly eccentric, wacky, caricatured, which, um, which I find funny. They used to ask me a question, have you got any tips for me today? And I would say, I certainly have. It's funny, honestly, it's just funny. Right, now, okay. So it's been very successful it's streaming in America and Canada, which is even good, better. So will you please watch it? Will you please be so nice? Now, we're just gonna do this. Obviously potatoes will only take about 10 minutes. So, oh, this for some reason, oh, it, for some reason is not, boiling up so it needs to boil because we, otherwise we won't get any neeps and turtles. How am I doing for time? Oh goody. Right so we'll just wait for that because that will take, have I got um, about, have I got 25 minutes or not? Okay. You're right okay so, pardon? Oh fine okay 20 minutes. Right we get this done quickly. Oh let me just do this hang on. Bring a lid on it. Right, so, um, I'm, a no, I'm a no nonsense person, really, and everyone knows that. So, we've just gone there. Now, I've started my YouTube, YouTube, actually, which I do simple food, but how to. I've got a lot of how to's, how to do vegetables, because a lot of people don't know how to cut a piece of celery, believe it or not, not just slice it, but cut it, cut it, how to cut it into dice and things. And that's not patronizing, it's true, because I didn't know until I was trying. So, and then the how to conquest tomato and how to do all this. So I thought how to is really important. So, but I've just really started doing it. Simple food, everyday food, because I think that's what people are after. I'm going to get far more healthy in the summer, but what the most important thing is that I wanted the food, okay, to be seasonal. So, you know, if I'm going to start doing salad, that's ridiculous. So that's why I'm doing all this sort of thing. So that's why I'm saying to everybody, please get the children next week to um, join in with the batter and we'll cook the sausages, we'll cook the onions and we'll do all that, which will be so cool. And then, um, there we are. Uh, yeah, just roughly chop potatoes up, okay? 
Hope you're doing that. Roughly chop your potatoes, buddies up. Um, again, you can do this the day before. Oh, so that's fine. There we go. There we are. I don't, you know, there's no nonsense really. You just do, you don't want any nonsense. You just, you know, want to get on with it, to be honest with you. So. Oh, I'm so pleased. Seriously. Oh, my God. I am. Thank you so much for saying that, Katie, because it's really nice. Um, are, you, are you cooking from Washington? Are you, are you actually doing steak and kidney pie from Washington? If that's the case, I'm really impressed. Now, I'm going to take... I might as well just leave that there, actually. So, for the moment, so this is also going to be chopped up as soon as the neeps and tatters are done. So we're going to put that on. We're going to put some butter on it. We're going to put some... Um, so I'm just going to slow down for a minute now. We're just cooling this down, obviously. Push it down so it's really fat. And you can imagine, if I left that overnight, it goes solid. It would be so perfect. But and then you can eat it like that. You can eat it now after it's cooked, OK? So it's fine. So if you do what it has. Any questions? Because I can't do anything until these are cooked. For some reason, these are taking ages to cook. And I don't know why. But it doesn't matter because if, if it's not done in time, we'll just have to, because I've got some here. And I've got some that I cooked. I've got to, uh, I might do. I've got some I cooked earlier. If. Um, um, someone hasn't, someone hasn't um, unfortunately, got the kidneys in. Did she forget to put the kidneys in? Yes, it seems like the kidneys haven't made it into the dish. <laughs> okay, don't worry about that, please. Don't worry. I'm going to sit down a minute. Please don't worry if they haven't. What I would do now is to just quickly sear them off with a little bit of flour, okay? And then just open your oven and pop them in. It won't make any difference whatsoever. I promise you. So just do it. Yes. Do you know what? There's so many things that happen to me. I've forgotten. I don't do these things. Genuinely, it happens to anybody. So don't worry about it. You just do them and pop them in. So what I'm going to say is that, you know, the thing is, recipes are only there for guidelines. Recipes are there for, oh, it's cold. Can I have that one open? Close. It's really cold. Um, recipes are there for... Um, guidelines from um, to make up your own. Now it's all about confidence. Cooking is all about confidence. So I think that um, what I try to instill is people not to be set on too too much a thing in a recipe. That if you if you can't get something, but you always will be able to get it because it's going to be in season. But if you just happen to look at a recipe and you want to do something in um, which is a slightly different, and you sort of can't get it. Or change it to something else you know a bit of protein doesn't matter just change it to something else so what i would say to you is um just don't worry about anything just don't worry about just don't worry about um don't get so hung up about one thing you just change it to whatever you want all right um, we've got a very interesting question what what pudding would you say goes with this Okay, I would have something incredibly light. I would have something like, almost like a pear, just a pear, boiled pear, um, very light with lemon, you know, quite citrus citrusy. Um, I would also put in um, maybe, um, I wouldn't have any creamy because you've got enough here. I mean, this is quite heavy. And also I have done it for four, but it's probably for six, which is fine, or even eight, a small, smallish quantities, but it depends. Uh, my quantities are reasonably, reasonably generous, so I think that's quite important because there's nothing worse than buying something from a supermarket and you get it home and you have to buy three for two because this is portions are so small. Um, but this, I, I do believe in actually being generous and having maybe a bit left over. So I would say to you, I would say to you, um, yeah, that's it. Just have things, you know, just have it left over and that's it. What was the question again? <laughs> oh, pudding, sorry. Got for a moment. Um, okay. Right. Do you know what I'd love after this? I know it's 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 not heavy, but I would love my rhubarb, rhubarb crumble, even just rhubarb, a rhubarb compote or something like that. Just 
with some delicious little bit of cream or something, um, which is not heavy, just keep it light. I think rhubarb, I think rhubarb would be perfect. It's seasonal, it's delicious. I think probably not having the crumble on the top as I did last week, but you could certainly do the compote that I did. And I have just had that, the compote I did last week, and you see it on the Instagram, would be delicious because it's healthy, it's good, it's refreshing, and you'd be able to eat it after this, which is fine, which is what you're looking for. Um, this is not that, actually, can I just recap this? This is actually not that fattening because this is not that heavy because of how we've done it. So I'm not, I haven't killed you with flour, butter and all this stuff. And this is really important to remember. If you're going to put pastry on the top, yeah, that's a bit, that's a bit more unhealthy. But a little bit of pastry, I don't know, as long as you don't have too much. But I do think that if you just have this and the Swede, Swede is so good for you. I know it's carbs again. Um, you know, it's whatever. I don't know what you're doing with your carbs or whether you're not going to have carbs or anything. But I have to tell you, um, I do eat carbs. I try not to do too much, though, because they do turn to sugar. I mean, some of you might have known that I did this diabetic um, television program about the sugar blood and things like this. And I think that's quite important for people, you know, now to be aware. But also, I do think it's important that we don't actually have to eat as much meat as we used to. We used to eat a lot more meat. And I do think it's not necessary so much. So basically, oh, things are happening. <laughs> uh, basically, I think that that, you know, I think that's thing. I think that's come down. Quantity of that has come down, which is a good thing. But I also think we need to promote meat. We need to eat meat because, you know, they're saying all this thing, you know, don't eat meat. But I'm sorry, you do. You know, well, for me, I mean, I think it's important for children. I think it's important for bone growing and all this stuff, I think every that sort of thing is very important. Let's see if it's boiling now. Yeah, it's beginning yeah. to boil. It's taken an awful long time. Um, so that's it. So basically, uh, I think... We've got some lovely recipes coming in for uh, ideas for pudding. Oh, come on, go for it, take me away. Jude rhubarb and custard. Yeah, that's what I said, rhubarb, perfect, yes. by and, compote. And also your custard from last week was delicious, Dave said. Oh, thank you, Dave. That is fabulous. Thank you. Dave is a friend. Dave was on. Let me explain who Dave is. Dave is a lovely person. He was on um, uh, Great Family um, Showdown, which is like a, not family show. Yes, it was Showdown, family showdown. I'm getting confused. My programs are. Um, and they're such great, enthusiastic cooks. And they're so nice. And basically, um, yep. So we're always in contact, which is really special because they just love food. You know, food brings people together. And what I think is so exciting about this farm shop partnership is it's all about local and seasonal. As I said at the beginning, this is so important because when you go around a supermarket, I don't know about you, but sometimes it can be incredibly confusing because they would bring things out when they're just not around in our country. I think we're going to have to be more seasonal in our country um, because, you know, food will become more expensive from abroad. And they, we do bring a lot of food from abroad. Believe me, we bring about 40% of our food consumption from abroad. And I think we need to change this. We need to change this. We need to go local, promote the farmers, promote the local growers, push all the seasonal. Look at the asparagus that's going to start coming out. Ah. My lovely asparagus. I do as much asparagus as I possibly can during this short season, the three weeks it's in or so. So, um, we have a question here. Far away. What's, uh, what's Rosie's favourite dish or meat to cook? Okay, I think probably my favourite, my very favourite, you're going to be quite surprised with this, is pork. There is nothing like the most beautiful piece of pork loin roasted with crackling. I love also roast beef. I love roast beef. I love, I love a strip loin, a good piece of strip loin. Cook it for about 45 minutes, hardly anything. Let it rest for an hour or half an hour or something. Oh, unbelievable. But there's nothing like applesauce, Bramley applesauce, applesauce a lovely roast pork and I'm doing actually I'm doing pork chops on one of the things with a lovely sticky sticky thing sticky um, coating and um, I think that sort of thing is would is 
my, one of my favorite with apple sauce. I have to have mm. the apple sauce. Without apple, I don't want it. But with the apple sauce, yummy, yum, yum. And roasty potatoes and obviously parsnips, which are delicious. And lots of parsley, lots of parsley. I'm a parsley fanatic. I'm a parsley new potato fanatic. Do you know what I do with my new potatoes? I, get, I take the New Jersey rolls. They, do you know they don't just, they don't taste the same. The Jersey rolls, which are, they, they, you know, they're, they're actually, um, uh, you know, they're done on the side in Jersey. And they, you know, they, uh, they, they have a different flavour to what they used to do, really. I don't know what it is or what they've done, what they've changed, but it's not the same. But how I like to have them is I cook them till they're lovely, till they're soft. And then I put them in a pan with lots of butter, but lots of parsley. And then I really, fr not fry, but I almost just cook them off for about 15 minutes. And it's like, oh, you try that. They are utterly delicious. Even done on normal potatoes, it would be delicious with this. Delicious. Just serving this with, with that. Yummy. Anything to eat. Now, believe it or not, they're boiling. Thank goodness. Alleluia. They're boiling. So here we go. So we're going to take this off. Because Swede, I don't know whether you know, you probably do know, because, you know, a lot of you. Swede takes so long to cook. They are because they're, they're you saw how hard they were to cut. Well, it's like, you know, it's like, I mean, well, um, let me just well, check. Interesting question for you, actually. Let me just check them. Hang on. Yeah, let's go on. Uh, just, is there a little, if, have you got Joanne? Yes. Who's asked, really wants to know how to make the greatest roast potatoes of all time. Okay, I'll tell you. Let me get this. I'm actually now going to put, although probably a bit soon, but I'm going to do it. Only because I want to get it going. Oopsie. Go on, keep going, boiling. Come on, keep boiling, keep boiling. For some reason it's not going up there. Keep boiling, keep boiling. It's not going up there. It doesn't keep boiling. I don't know what's happening here. Hang on, let me take some water out. Maybe take some water out. Wait a minute. No, I know, but it's just annoying me. I get annoyed. So we just, there we go. Right, just take this off. Right, ooh, now. I'm gonna find. I'm gonna find lots of little bits on the floor. So, oh, that's ready to go. Take that. So, okay. What was the question again? Roast potatoes. Right. What you do is, this is the best, in my opinion, the best recipe. You boil the potatoes till they're not quite cooked, nearly cooked, not quite, and then you fluff them up in a pan. Fluff, 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 fluff. You get your oil in a pan really hot. You then season them really well, really season them, because potatoes take a lot of salt. You'd be surprised. I sometimes season them with sesame seeds around the potatoes as well. I put sesame seeds, so we got sesame seeds because they are delicious with the potatoes. So in the pan, you've got the salt, you've got sesame seeds or whatever you want or without sesame seeds. And then you put them into your hot oil, the pan. You put them into the oven for 40 minutes. They are the best potatoes ever. Now, do not touch them. Your oven's got to be high. I have my oven for on about 220. Now, yeah, if your oven's too hot, you may have to turn it down a bit. But I have my oven on about 220. I really get them going. I then turn them once during cooking, once, and never, that I don't touch them. So I touch them once only, and they make the best crispy roast potatoes ever. <laughs> so that's it. Um, can we ask, what, if someone can't find, in America they're asking, they can't find a sweet, what would be a good, uh, you know, a replacement for a sweet? A uh, turnip. A turnip. You have turnips because they were for sale when I was out there. Uh, turnips. Um, they'll be fine. A turnip will be fine. Not a problem, honestly, if you if you can't get it. Um, so, and, um, so turnip or parsnip. Um, you can get a parsnip. That'll be good too. Parsnip would be lovely too. 
Right, I'll clean this up a little bit because it's looking a little bit. I'm going to put this onto here, make it look a little bit. I'm going to take this away and this away. Right, so, so to answer your question, that'll be delicious. Parsnip, parsnip, turnip. I think parsnip or celeriac. Oh, celeriac would be delicious as well. Half celeriac and half potato. Because in my recipe, I've put 900 grams of each potato and 900 grams of things. So it's all good. So, there we are. Now, so we're just waiting now for my... <laughs> there, it'll come. See, there it is again. I've never had this before. Oh, well. Right, I'm now going to have a look at the one... I'm now going to have a look at the one I put in earlier. Just let's have a little peep. Okay, bear with me for one second. Woohoo! Pardon? They, theirs were, no, no, they mustn't touch theirs. No, no, you, you mustn't touch your casserole. Once your casserole's in the oven, leave it. Do not touch it. Do not open your oven even. Do not go anywhere near it. In fact, make sure, I'm just turning my thing up and I'm putting it on the top, this one, because it's, uh, hang on, bear with me guys. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Can you hear me? That's now, if you can't get spring onions, okay, just use some um, uh, chives, anything, even shallots. Think about um, spring onions, they go soft very quickly and that's why I use them. It's like, a, you know, it's like um, anything like that. So just keep going with it. Now, that, if I had a stock on, would go into my stock, but unfortunately it's going into my bin. Are you releasing some videos about how to chop vegetables? I have done. And what I've done is, um, I've released some vegetables. I've re they, they should be up and running next week. I've, I'm, I've done about 15 different vegetables um, and how to chop them. Literally, I've, call it, I've called it how to, so how to chop. So you just go onto my video, Look at how to, how to chop tomato, how to chop this, how to chop that. Easy peasy. But there's so many, like, like a fennel, for instance, so many different things to chop. And that you can do it in certain ways. That A leek, you know, you'd be surprised what you can, what you can do with a leek. <laughs> Believe it or not. I mean, in different ways you can chop a leek. And carrots and all this sort of thing. So I've given you, I've given you a really good, what I call, an over, you know, good view of vegetables. I'm waiting for the delicious artichokes to come out in season, so I'll show you how to prepare a large artichoke. Um, we didn't have time to do the Jerusalem ones, unfortunately, but I will do that. Um, there's so many vegetables to do, but we're taking one step at a time. Um, I've done 15 so far. Sorry, you have a question. You're saying, how long should the casserole cook for? One and a half hours. Please do not open your oven, and please do not look at it. Don't touch it for one and a half hours. It's got to stay in, and that is it. Just don't touch it. That's the trick. Do not touch. Um, so I've got mine in now and it's cooking away. It's been cooking. It will have done 40 minutes. Um, so which is fantastic, which will be done. So I will show you when it comes out. Now, first thing we're going to do, though, the potatoes will be done in about seven minutes. So we're going to wait. Now, are there any questions? You've got me for seven minutes. Is there anything you want me to tell you that... Um, I think I'd like to talk about some of the recipes that I'm going to do. I'm going to do um, things like, um, actually, for the, for the farmer's markets, you know, to go along. What you do is you literally can, those farmer mar farmer's markets who've signed up, you just literally, you, you tell them, you maybe just give them a ring, or you, you tell them that, oh, turn this down now, it's actually boiling over, which is great. Um, there we go. Um... So you literally can just, you literally um, just phone them up or go and see them and they'll have it ready for you. You know, this is a great opportunity to find out where your local farm shop is. Sure, if you go onto the farm shop associate, the, the, far, the, um, <laughs> the farm shop retail association, I have to get it right. Farm retail. The, yes, the farm shop retail association. You, 
you can find out where your local farm shop who've gone into partnership with us is. This is really important because you then can just ring them up and then just say, I'm going to come and pick up my box or bag or whatever of the cook along with Rosemary Schrager on Saturday. That's how we're doing it. Um, we're hoping that maybe as time goes on, we'll be able to deliver it to people, but that we're just taking one step at a time. I think we need to walk before we can run because the main thing is I really want this to work. I want to get as many farm shops involved as possible. I think there are about 500 farm shops who are members of the association, uh, farm 500 or 600, so they're all over the UK. So I think it's important because by doing this, you are literally supporting your local farmers. You're getting your local beef. Nothing, there's, you know, there's nothing better than this. And also, you know, it's in season. So I think, you know, we can't go wrong. It is hearty food. Yes. It's not going to be salads because it can't be. So I need to, you need to see this in a slightly different way. And you need to see it that it's going to be just proper cooking, wholesome cooking and cooking that the family will all enjoy. And next week, as I said, it's the toad and hole, but I want you to get the farmer's sausages, the, the local sausages. This is really important. Get the local sausages, get everybody involved, get the children involved. They can make the batter, be great fun if they sent me photographs, and then they can eat it. I am going to give Yorkshire, I'm going to give you the best Yorkshire pudding ever. There we are, there's a challenge and a half. Please come on, far away. Can we recap the gravy part? Yes. What I did was, when I took the casserole out of one and a half hours, and you saw me take it out, and then you saw me open it, I hadn't looked at it before, I took the top off, the fat off, and then what I did was, I took, I got a spoon with, with the holes in it, I then put it into this, okay? And then what was left was the gravy. Now, was the sauce or gravy. What I didn't want to do is put it through a sieve. Why? All the goodies are in there. So what I did was literally taking this and I had to boil it down. So, and by boiling it down, what I've done is I made it thicker. That's all I did. And this is extra gravy. Look, it's got all those little bits in it's fine. This is extra gravy to put to put onto your potato. Now, this is the potato from the neeps that was left from earlier I did, because I knew I had to do one ready for you. So the, the thing is, you will have some left over, but if you want it, there's nothing like extra gravy. Pour it on, delicious. So that's why. If you put it all in here, what happens is it will become soggy and it won't be as good, it won't be as nice. So that's the problem. So by doing it like this, you've got solid meat in there. You've got it all lovely and moist. You see how it's supped up. Look, look at it. It's beautiful. And then I'm going to put, it's probably perfect now for me to put the neeps on, to be honest with you. And I'm going to put this then. What's, okay, another question now. Yeah, just quickly, one of the got coming through quite quickly. Uh, pounce of the shop, do you say which knife to use or is there a special now, knife? What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually show you as time goes on in how to's in my YouTube talking about knives. Now, I always use when I'm chopping and I did do it in my chopping on the YouTube. I use a little knife when I'm starting, when you start to chop, learn to chop like a shallot. You use a little knife because it's more controllable. If you go too big a knife, you can't control it as well. If you do a smaller knife, it's much easier, and then you cut it down. Now, I always use east-west. If there's one knife that you want in your kitchen, it is this. It's an east-west. This is a cleaver. This is something that you need that is actually absolutely, it's per, it does everything. I mean everything. But obviously, you, it's a one knife wonder, but you need, you've got things like burning knives, filleting knives, they are the tools of our trade, and I will be taking you through what knives. Now, the most important thing is when you have a knife, before you even own a knife, what I call own a really good knife, what you need to do is, when I find, when I find, I normally can get it straight away. Uh, mm -mm. Uh, uh, can't see it. No, oh, yes, here it is. I normally, God, that drawer is such a mess. I normally 
always have this with me. So there's, there's different ways to do it. You either do it that way, you find the way you want. You either do it that way, all right, or, but never turn your knife upside. It's always keeping it the same way. But I do it that way. That's how I do it. But you find the way you feel most comfortable with. But the most important thing about a knife is, put it on your thing, lift it slightly, because it's slightly beveled. And if you go too high, you're going to blunt it. So it's finding that so you can sharpen it. You know, the thing is, is not to do it too heavily. Almost have a loose wrist with it. People, what I find is people, people are stiff as cardboard normally, and I say, go on, loosen, 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 loosen. That's it. So there you go. Any more questions? Yes, we have a tuition question. Yes. Uh, we have a tuition question from Andrew, who is uh, making a starter course for a film wedding, yet with no answers. Uh, oh. And he is making a, making a starter with my sourdough bread. Ooh. It's on day five. Yes. But no bubbling. Should I start again? Oh, no bubbling. Okay. Well, it depends when you put your temperature. Did you put it in at the right temperature, for instance? Did you add the right quantity, half and half, half water and half flour to the next day? That is a little suspicious because if you actually, it's not bubbling up and it's not rising, start again. You know, the thing about a starter is it's got to work. It's all to do with the yeast, the natural yeast, working itself, the carbon dioxide coming up and letting it rise. This is so important. And it, sometimes it just doesn't work. So you do have to start. If it hasn't risen by now, you're in trouble. If it hasn't bubbled by now, start again. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Never mind. Do it again. Do it next time. Temperature is everything, I'm afraid, with doing sourdough. Temperature is everything. Okay, next question. Actually, we've got it's another question just saying, could we go, the gravy seems quite crucial, and they're asking, could we just go through it one more time? Of course we can, no problem, Nothing, nothing's too much. What the gravy is, uh, it's taking it out of the casserole. After it's come out of the casserole, one hour 30, one hour 40, it doesn't matter when it comes out, but not before one thirty. not before. Let it rest. Then, once it's rested for about 15 minutes, you're open it up don't open it until it's rested your fat will be on the top remove the fat then you've got your dish and then take a slotted spoon or any spoon a wire anything and put it, the meat into it and so you'll leave the gravy behind all right you'll take some along with you so you end up with that the gravy that was ended up in here this was what was up was quite high and it was still a little thin for me. So to thicken it up, what I did was I boiled it. What is important, it is crucial this, because this is all this flavor, and you just pour it on to have extra gravy. I mean, that's gravy in there, but that is crucial. You're quite right, it is crucial, and it is really important. Now, we're nearly ready. So what I'm going to do, we're going to just test this. I must just have a look at this for one moment. Bear with me, guys. Bear with me, getting there. Right, we're now going to check the potatoes, to be honest with you. Make sure they're cooked. Yep, okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put the potatoes into, into the colander. Ooh, I'm, completely, I'm completely steamed up. Ooh. Right, okay. Now we're going to take this. We're going to pour them back into here. Okay. That's what I'm going to show you. These questions are all very important. Right, do you see this? It's soft. But if you cook, if you hadn't cooked those in first, they wouldn't be soft. Potato is soft. It's all very soft. Just really soft potato. Right, I'm now going to take this. It's great, this. Now, what I don't want, if I wanted it, if I'm going to put some butter in here. There you go. If I wanted it, um, I'll put some salt in there too. If I wanted it fine, then I'd get a slightly, I wouldn't get this one. It would be a, I put it through a ricer and everything. But because I quite like this, oh, <laughs> that was a butter coming out. Right, so we're on there. We're nearly done. We're nearly at the, we're nearly at the end. Now, how, I want to know, everybody, 
How are you all doing? Are you where I am? Because this, by the way, this, you've made this now, but this can wait until later to put on it, but it's done anyway, so that's the main thing. And, there we go. Just keep going. Oh, the smell, I can really smell that sweet. I love that smell. It, 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 it just reminds me of winter. It really does. There we go. Really go for it. There we are. Now I'm just going to taste it for seasoning. Okay. Just going to taste it for seasoning. Oopsie. <laughs> um, just going to put this on. Needs a bit more seasoning. It's so surprising how much seasoning potatoes need. It really is. Right. Is she? Hi, Sarah. I hope you're enjoying this. So nice. Right. Are you having it tonight or tomorrow for lunch, Sarah? There we are. It's delicious. Yummy. Jilly, are you watching tonight? Oh, why are you putting pastry on yours? Okay. It's all right. It's cool. That's delicious! I love this presser. I really do like it. It does what it says it's going to do. Right. Now, what I'm going to do here, put the lovely spring onions in. Okay. I'm also going to, by the way, I'm, I'm bringing out some beautiful, some beautiful boards, chopping boards. Um, bigger than that, slightly bigger, but you can leave on the side. Really nice boards you can have. So excited about them. Oh, are you having it for lunch tomorrow? How lovely. Right. There we are. Now. Now, do you see how that's just really must? I didn't add any milk to it because it's not, that's not what I'm wanting. Now, guys, let's just take this out. Just, I'm just doing this, just heating up. I'm just going to take out the right here. We go. I think that, that looks lovely, absolutely wonderful. Now, actually, this is quite a big plate, but I think it'd be nice on here. Okay, there it is. This is my, I hope it's delicious. It will be delicious. Steak and kidney pie. Let me have a look at it. Let me go for it. Okay, so, are you ready? So, can we just say, this, I'm not ready to put that on top yet, I'm afraid, but you can see that's ready to go on top already. Now, this is cooked, as if it's put on top. I've got the sauce from that one earlier. Thank you. I've got the sauce from that one earlier. And I've got the, uh, from this, this here. Now, here it goes. Right, we're just going to cut it. Oh, I'm not trying to cut it. All right. Oh! Right. Yum! The sauce, which is full of goodies. Now, 
Now, you can put, um, actually, can you just get me a little bit of parsley, someone? Be so nice with a little bit of parsley on that. From the garden. Oh, actually, you could stretch it, couldn't you? Stretch a little bit. Take a little bit from there, outside the window. That'll do. <laughs> right, OK, a little bit of parsley. Just roughly. Yes, past the outside my window. Now, yes, yes. It's gone all the year round. Right, okay. Now, the egg, no, 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 no. The egg, when I put the egg in, what I do is I put it into the neeps and tatters so it sets a bit. I didn't do it tonight. But normally I put an egg yolk into it just so it helps set but it's not absolutely necessary. Now, guys, here's my delicious um, steak and kidney uh, neeps and tatties. Doesn't that look delicious? Um, I'm just going to, what I'm going to do is just so it looks really pretty, I'm just going to take that off and that bit, just so it looks really lovely. Oh, I eat that. Um, Oh my goodness me, that is so delicious. So if I just take it's just for a photograph, yeah. And then if I just, I want to take a photograph of it, you see. So you, I'll send. This is my delicious steak and kidney, my neeps, tatties on top. <gasps> So looking forward to that. I think I might, I'm going to have a taste with you. Ready? Here we go. Mm. That is absolutely delicious. If you don't love it, I'd be shocked. But anyway, I do hope you enjoyed this. Next week we're going to have next week we're going to have our lovely toad in the hole and our lovely caramelized onions. And what is important is that I that those who have children or grandchildren be lovely to get the children involved to make the batter and everything else. Anyway, I will see you next week. Before you go, Rosemary. Yeah. Right. It will go into the oven for about forty minutes. Yeah, because it'll be cold. Uh, if it's if it's still warm, if it's warm like it is now, probably be about 35, 40 minutes, 180. Okay, any more questions? No? Did I hope you enjoyed it? I hope you enjoyed it. I loved it. It's been great. So um, hopefully I'll see you next week. And hopefully we'll have lots of farm shops involved and be very exciting. And can't wait to get into this. Bye. Bye.